right, let's uh, get our acts together in Nigeria so we can be among these countries. Now let's head to the crypto space and see what's happening there. I see a sea of red. I thought Ladi was the problem, but Ladi isn't here today, and yet we still have a sea of red. So it wasn't Ladi after all. We need, to, we need to do something about this. So uh, Bitcoin is down almost 1%, 0.96% there. And is now at 51,000. Lost the 52, at least for now. And, uh, but Ethereum is still thriving, 0.38% at 2,913.33. BNB, XRP, Cardano, and, and all of that. They're still looking good for now. And the market is still very, very greedy investors are still looking for how to pull out their profits uh, at this time. I wonder how the next uh, correction will look like. But it's 38, uh, 78, beg your pardon, and it's extremely greedy. But as some of our analysts have warned, this does not automatically mean that you're going to make profit if you decide to sell at this time. So do watch out and customize your decision, your investment decision. So there you have it. Bitcoin is down, really down, almost 1%. Ethereum uh, is up, as well as BNB, Cardano, and uh, XRP following the path of Bitcoin. Lost 3.70% uh, at uh, 54 cents. But I think the biggest story going on in Nigeria now, which has to be related to FX, I guess, is that uh, crypto trading platform Binance has confirmed that it has limited trading on the Nigerian currency for the USDT, which is a stable coin pegged against the US dollar to address what it described as unusual currency movement. Yesterday, when Ladi was here on this segment, he did speak with his guests on um, how a lot of Nigerians seem to have embraced uh, USDT. Now it seems that perhaps the government or Binance is doing something about this. But anyways, let's, uh, let me find out from someone who is really into it. Sheung Daniel is the Chief Executive Officer of Alpha Geek Technologies. Hi, Sheung. Good afternoon. Uh, hello, good afternoon. So... I'm great. Good to have you on the show. So tell us, please, what, does, what is this? Uh, that, is it true? Binance has confirmed that it's, uh, it has pegged trading against the US dollar, USDC, which Nigerians are really interested in. What's the situation? Uh, from the statement they gave the, the past earlier on, I believe that uh, what Binance did was to just ensure that the Naira is not as volatile as we are experiencing basically, you know, so they actually um, benchmark with the previous day um, closing trades and ensure that um, the prices for the next day are not significantly above that. However, um, I think they will be in the best position to really understand the dynamics behind their decision. Okay, but, but what does it mean? Does it mean if... Uh, there was supposed to be a pair-to-pair -pair transaction. Now you would use the rate of the previous day. Just give us an example. Okay, so I mean, basically, what it means is, um, if the day closed, if the previous day closed at, let's say, a thousand seven hundred, for instance, all right, which is, you know, just like the same kind of directive that the CDN gave to the IMTOs, whereby um, I think they've gone back on it now. That's previously, you know, that they shouldn't uh, trade above plus or minus 2.5 percent so that that helps the naira not to just you know either dip too fast or you know go up too high so essentially what that is because it's a free market right but so willing buyer willing seller but what they are trying to do is ensure that the people who are buying are not just buying so if i if the previous day closed at 1700 even though yes i'm a willing buyer i shouldn't just decide that i want to buy at 1800 without any significant i mean if while people are bidding for Assets normally the bids are in you know small increments and not necessarily huge jumps. So, so I think that's that's essentially what uh, Binance tried to ensure that you know someone is not just bidding a thousand seven hundred dismays and the next bid is a thousand eight hundred and thousand nine hundred and then two thousand just like that. So, so does does it sound like Binance is working hand in hand with the federal government of Nigeria, or is just is this just an initiative? Uh, of Binance to help the situation that the country is in at, at the moment? 
Um, I believe that they are acting in you know national interests. Uh, of course, the FX issue. Every business that's operating within Nigeria, within the crypto space, understands that the uh, FX issue is something that is of national concern. And so, yes, yeah, so every well-meaning organization will be willing to support the government in whatever initiatives that they are pushing. I mean, but if they are working directly with the federal government, I really cannot say. But I believe that every well-meaning organization, including ours and you know, other members of our coalition, will also ensure that, I mean, we're not... There's no rush to buy USDT from, you know, member organizations. So if we were to be the, uh, an exchange buying, there's no, there's no reason why an exchange is going to be rushing to buy up all the USDT in the market at whatever rates necessary. So essentially, they might be speculators, but you know, in the um, national interest, everybody is you know to maintain you know some kind of rates that that, that makes sense. So, with this now, do you see perhaps in the nearest future possible collaboration and regulation, you know, of the uh, 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 crypto space in Nigeria? Yes, evidently. So, I mean, what brought about all of all these peer-to-peer -peer trades in the first place? The rise of peer-to-peer -peer came when, after the CBN, you know, put out that directive in 2021, you know, stopping uh, banks and financial institutions from providing um, banking services to cryptocurrency exchanges, you know. So, what that meant was that we as exchanges could no longer buy cryptocurrencies from the users and pay them Naira because we had no access to banks. So platforms that were providing peer-to-peer, -peer, which means they act in escrow, one user to the other person, they both agree, and then you know all the platform we're doing is facilitating the trade. So that's that got so that became very popular. That's what everybody has been using right now. Um, so evidently, if CBN were to resign on, they've of course they've gone back on it. There's regulation coming up. It's about time that they actually went faster with the regulation and ensure that. You know, they put power back in the hands of the exchanges, which they are under regulation, and they can actually give some level of um, control, you know, to ensure that um, in situations like this, everyone is not just uh, buying, because you, there's no, it's very difficult to control a peer-to-peer -peer market, you know. I want to buy at this rate, even if it's just $1, and for me, I probably just think, okay, well, 100 naira above doesn't really matter. But then, if people are using those uh, markets to actually determine prices of what it is because you know when you go on cbn platform to actually check well, what's today's rate for the dollar you actually don't get anything yeah. it gets you know something ridiculously low so everybody's using what the what the peer-to-peer -peer markets are saying however it's it's a fault of anybody not really but as a nation the government needs to actually step in mm. and what's the rate now that regulation. What's the rate now, Sheung, the peer-to-peer -peer rates? Uh, I mean, on our, on, uh, okay, your peer-to-peer rate, I think, is well over 1,850 last time I checked. Hmm. Well, still, it looks like we have a long way to go, but thank you so much for sharing your You're views welcome. with us this afternoon. Sheung Denia is the Chief Executive Officer of Alpha Geek Technologies.